Hey, hi, how you doing? It's Jim. It's Wednesday. I know this for a fact. Uh, so, this is part two of Power Slave. Um, this has been a few months in the making because I I listened to a made side one in October, November, something like that last year, and I, I didn't actually get around to editing it or putting it together or certainly not uploading it. So when these two videos go up, um, there'll be different gym, there'll be different clothes, there'll be different days, there'll be different months, different years entirely, but it's still the same album and it's an album I love very, very, very much. And it's kind of a, a nice sort of um, an easy go to comfortable place because uh, today I just want to I just want to, I, I don't really want to be challenged. I just want to listen to something that I want to listen to. Um, I wasn't even necessarily going to make a video today, but I thought, well, I really, really, really fancy listening to Power Slave. Um, I've already listened to part one on video, so I can just literally jump into part two. Uh, we've got three songs, uh, Back in the Village, Power Slave, and Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Um, this is undoubtedly one of the high peaks of uh, of metal. Uh, it's one of the absolute high points of Iron Maiden's career. Um, it's uh, Some days it is absolutely my favourite album from them. Some days it's my favourite album ever by anybody. But um, this is um, just wonderful and uh, i think probably a lot of people know this and if you don't i'm i'm surprised but uh you know people are surprised i don't know much frank zappa for example um so i'm just gonna crack on so we're gonna start with uh what was the first song called? Uh, it's Back in the Village, isn't it? Yeah. Back in the Village, back in the Village, back in the Village. It's great. It's such a great album, this. It's such a good album. Uh, let's go. Three, two, one. Touchdown. <laughs> The absolute classic lineup from Iron Maiden. Uh, Bruce Dickinson on lead vocals, uh, Steve Harris as ever on the bass, but Adrian Smith and Dave Murray on guitars, uh, Nico McBrain on the drums. And uh, it's in the early 80s, about 83, I think this came out. 84. Martin Birch on uh, production duties. And this uh, gave birth to the World Slavery Tour, which has got um, this amazing live album is uh, a document of that tour. This is Guitar solo. Just a 
A little build up. Imagine the impact this record had on him as a 14-year-old. Stella. That's what it was. Absolute Stella. change. Um, we now move on to Power Slave. The whole package of this is just 
brilliant. As I say, they got the entire classic lineup of the band. Martin Birch doing the production. And of course, you've got Derek Riggs' artwork. Um, there are so many classic Maiden album covers, but surely Power Slave has got to be one of the most iconic covers that they've ever done. There is so much detail in there. There's so many little Easter eggs in the in the paintings. quite believe that this is only two years short of being 40 years old. That just staggers me. It sound, feels like, not yesterday, but it doesn't feel a long time ago this released. Makes me feel very old. I know every single note, every single beat and sound and everything about this record. Ingrained, at ingrained in me. Ancient Mariner. This is 
such an epic tune. I can't remember the first time I heard these songs. I do, I, I mean, it must have had such a, and it made made such an impression on me. That I don't remember the first time. It's uh, a bit sad. Don't use a gong very often in Iron Maiden. Just there.
the star dogged moon, too quick, quick for grown or sigh. Each turned his face with a ghastly pang and cursed me with his eye. Four times twenty living men, and I heard no sigh or groan. Then they come, a lifeless lump. They drop down. so funny I've not listened to this record for a I don't know not maybe not that long but probably maybe a year and uh, it's like I, I, I know every single word every single note every single beat and I anticipate the changes I know when everything's it's so funny isn't it how music can be ingrained on you so strongly like that Adrian. Dave Murray, Adrian Smith.
Quite simply, one of the finest records, certainly of the 1980s, maybe ever. It's just, just brilliant. Um, I don't care if you disagree. I don't care. It's my choice. It's my channel. I play what I want to play. Um, yeah, it's just one of my favourite ever records. And uh, um, no, I just, I, I didn't really fancy anything too challenging, anything too new today. Um, I just wanted to listen to some music that made me comfortable. Um, you know, sometimes you do. And, uh, and, uh, and I hope, hope you've enjoyed that. Um, just such a brilliant, brilliant band. Um, it's kind of a part of me as much as my sort of, my fingers are almost uh, Iron Maiden. It's just, a, it's always been there. Uh, where as long as I can remember, um, and will always be there. Uh, just, just such a great, great, great band. Um, there we are. Um, yeah, I'll. Uh, it, it, it's not a reaction because I know this so well. Um, that's uh, that's quite obvious. And uh, hey, I don't have really anything else to say about it. Um, do, do if you don't know this band. I find that hard to believe. If you don't know this record, uh, do go and get it because uh, uh, stream it, listen to it, however you want to do it. But your life will be richer for it uh, with it in your life. Um, I, 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 I suggest. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to just say during that as, as I was playing, um, I do wonder if Iron Maiden started as a band now 21 2021 um whether they would gain any traction and, get, and be successful because in the world of metal i don't think they're heavy enough uh, they were uh, years ago but i don't compared to a lot of the stuff that comes out this is just not it's not extreme it's not sort of uh as heavy as most heavy music is now and uh it's kind of almost veering into the into the realms of classic rock. It really is. Um, and I just don't know that with the uh, proclivity of uh, manufactured electronic and... Um, uh, I hesitate to use the word soulless, but I'm going to use it. Um, manufactured pop music, that this... That that tend to tends to exist in in a lot of the world today. This may not exist. I think these they may do may have done really really well as a sort of niche band, um, but I don't think they'd ever reach the uh, the lofty heights they eventually got to um, if they were starting out now. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a sad fact. I think that really is. But uh, 
I don't, I don't believe they would have, they'd have got there. They'd have been sort of uh, um, doing very, very well within their very small sphere, but uh, to be globe dominating, uh, ocean straddling behemoths that they became, I don't think that would ever have happened. I don't think that would ever happen now. So uh, uh, they were lucky. A lot of hard work. I mean, I don't mean that as they were lucky, as in all, oh, it's just down to luck. Of course it's not. But they were in the right place at the right time with the right amount of talent and the right songs. And everything was just right. Everything was just right. Um, so, yeah. I owe you another underwhelming Iron Maiden story. Uh, I realised I'd forgotten to record it, so I'm having to sort of slip this, slip this in afterwards. So hopefully it'll be seamless, absolutely seamless. Continuity. <gasps> um, so, many years ago, uh, read 12, 13 years ago for that, 14 years ago, um, as I've spoken about on another video, um, I used to have a little shop where I sold uh, speciality local food. And uh, as part of my uh, endeavours, I did a lot of farmers markets, Christmas markets, uh, food fairs, things like that. And um, one that I did in the middle of uh, deepest, darkest rural Essex, um, there was a chap set up stall next to me with his, uh, I don't know if it's his business partner or his partner partner, uh, but he was selling cheese. And uh, it had a lovely range of cheese and we, we got chatting and he was also a real sort of uh, uh, proper East End uh, uh, Essex boy. And so, oh, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. Well, you, know, you tell you what, you'll swap me some cheese for a jar of chutney. How does that sound to you? Yeah, name's Wally. Name's Wally. Yeah. And uh, we got chatting. And uh, I don't know how the conversation turned, but it transpired that I had a stand next to Wally Grove. Now, Wally Grove to those of you who don't know, was the security manager for Iron Maiden in a lot of their tours. He was on the on the road crew, and uh, he was just the nicest guy. And I, I didn't know him well enough to exchange phone numbers uh, and sort of chat outside of uh, these food shows and fairs. But uh, every time we'd, uh, we'd see him, uh, maybe sort of five, six times of these different uh, fairs over the course of two or three years, He'd always say, hey, Jim, how you doing? Yeah, oh, I've got some more stories to tell you about uh, about Bruce. Uh, no, no, I won't really. I can't. But I do want to, I want, I want to give you some uh, cheese and I'll have a, some of your, your chutney here. Yeah. So he did all these swaps and uh, and he used to regale me with some amazing stories about uh, the band on the road, about other bands he worked with as well, and also the royal family because he was uh, a bodyguard for the Queen Mother back in the day anyway so that's just another one of my slightly underwhelming uh, celebrity stories it's almost iron maiden but not quite there we are um, i'll see you all in the next video hopefully whenever whatever that is and until then this is jim over and out up the irons <laughs>